short. Short, okay. Um, uh, might have trigger warning to anyone who has lost parents. Um, feel your pain. Hi, my name is Sierra Bufflehead, and I'm an eighth grader from Western Med School. Describe the silence! Yeah. And this poem is a... This poem is a story of how it was for me losing my mother. I used many headlines and quotes from Omaha World Herald. And this is my poem, The Newspaper Said. January 11th, 2018, 45-year-old woman dies after, after being found laying in Omaha Street. She suffered from anxiety, depression, and bipolar disorder. But she never told me or my brother. She acted like she was the adult and I was the child. But I was the glue that kept her together. Out in public, we were the perfect family, but um. At home, I was the one to watch over my mother. I was the one who had to walk to the store and get money for taxes. And when I'd get home, I'd fix up a pre-cooked pizza from the gas station, gas station while she'd lay limp on the couch like a roadkill raccoon in the after effect of a hangover. I'd cover her with an old ripped blanket, pick up all the half drunken Bud Light and vodka bottles and empty them in the sink. I'd clean up the mail, money, and legal forms. The cigarette butts littered across the floor and the midnight cakes left half baked. My life always circled around her. Her love was the sun, and I was the lonely satellite de on a decaying orbit, pulled in faster and faster by the magnetic field of alcoholism. The cause of death does not appear to be suspicious, and of course it wasn't because you needed to drink, didn't you, Mom? You abused me with the, you abused me with the bottle of poison in one hand and the other balled into a fist. You crossed the line so much that I need every person in the world to have 20 fingers on each hand just to count the number of times you quit going to therapy and group. Life with you was an endless circle of, prom of promises, as empty as your beer bottles. You always said, Buffaloes never cry, never feel. We are never weak. And maybe you were strong with a fight with your fist, but in a battle of wills against alcohol, you were powerless. The temperature was nine degrees with a wind shear of zero when Buffalo was found. And where you were going, I'm still not sure. You and Aunt Georgia were drunk when the argument broke out. Yet, you're always drunk. And for some reason, you got out of the car wearing only shorts and a t-shirt. And where were your phone and purse? What about your coat and shoes? Then Georgia drove off, leaving you with no chance of survival. She was pronounced dead at 10.25 a.m. And for a long time after that, I wanted to be dead too. When my therapist asked what I had in my pockets, I gave her the rusted razor blade I'd found in the medicine cabinet. I didn't need it because my school was being re-renovated. Every day I would walk through the construction site, scavenging sharp little objects to take with me. A drywall school, a nickel-sized knockout from an outlet box, a shard of sheet metal. It was a cutter's heaven, a home depot of self-harm. But no matter how many crimson tallies I edge in my skin, the blood that stains the metal can't fill the mom-sized hole in the life I thought I had. I need you, Mom. I want you with me so much that I want to cry. But I won't, because I am a buffalo head. A buffalo heads do not feel, and we are never weak.